Hey. So there's there's, <laughs> those, there's another there's another something else going on in the tropical house you can tell me about. Yes, um, some of the uh, marmosets we have, in addition to common mar Jeffrey's marmosets, we have um, quite a number of um, more rare and endangered um, caltrichid um, species at the zoo, and we're going to be collaborating with a colleague at Disney's Animal Kingdom in Florida who is particularly interested in reproduction in caltrichid primates, that's um, marmosets and tamarins. Um, and she's, um, she's asked us if we can participate in her project, which is looking at reproductive cycles um, in some of these rarer primates. Because actually, believe it or not, the reproductive biology in a lot of these species still hasn't been worked out. And so we'll be um, actually collecting fecal samples um, Interestingly enough, you can use um, fecal samples to study hormones. Um, basically, the hormones, which are in the blood, like uh, progesterone, testosterone, these things, um, ultimately get excreted by the body, as they would do, everything is. It ends up in the urine and the feces. And so you can actually collect samples of, of fecal material that are excreted by an animal, and you can measure these hormones in their feces, and you can use that to track the hormones track what's going on in their bodies. And this is a really wonderful non-invasive way of studying hormones, the endocrinology of these animals. And one of the big, well there are a few advantages to it. I mean you can use it to study animals in the wild um, or zoo animals and you're not stressing them out by needing to take a blood sample to study their hormones. And the other thing is that by taking blood samples from these animals you're often stressing them and the stress changes the hormones that you're trying to measure. So doing fecal hormone assays is actually really advantageous. And this is something that um, we're going to be developing at the vet school, that we're, we're going to be um, developing the capability to, to run fecal hormone assays at the school. And this will allow us to do a number of, sort of non-invasive hormone studies in our, in our zoo population. So we're going to be looking at um, corticosteroids, these are the hormones like uh, cortisol or corticosterone that's produced during periods of stress. And we'll be able to evaluate the effects of management changes, movements to different enclosures, and see um, what effect this has on our animals. Um, and also, as I said, we're going to be looking at reproductive hormones like progesterone or testosterone to monitor um, the cycles and in females to monitor pregnancy. Um, and it's just, again, a great way of non-invasively monitoring them. And so one of these non-invasive fecal hormone projects is going to be looking at some of our more endangered primates and basically categorizing their, their reproductive cycles by using these fecal hormones.